Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Rhett Power, who is in, actually is in Brazil today. How are you doing, Rhett? I'm excellent, man. I can't uh, wait to talk. Excellent. And Rhett co-founded Wild Creations in 2007, quickly built the startup toy company into uh, they've one of the fastest growing businesses in South uh, Carolina and now he travels the globe speaking about entrepreneurship and management alongside the likes of um, people from the Gates Foundation, the AOL founder, even, pre even former President Barack Obama. So, all right, um, Rent, with those credentials, uh, we're going to talk today about leadership. So let, let's, let's, um, let's baseline this to begin with. So, you know, People look at or, or define leadership in different ways. How, how would you define it? I, that's a great question. And I, I think it's going to be sort of a, a jumbled answer. I, 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 I just don't know that you can give leadership a clear cut textbook uh, dictionary definition. I think that leadership comes in all forms and shapes and sizes and i think you know uh, the the janitor can be a leader mm -hmm. the you know everybody can be a leader and i think uh what i think a leader is is somebody that uh, motivates some motivates people that also inspires people um, i think of a leader as somebody that can is a great communicator somebody that can share a vision uh, in, a, in a really succinct way. Uh, and I think those are the traits of a good leader. The, mm -hmm. the people that I've interviewed on my show on LinkedIn, uh, the, the, the great leaders that I've interviewed and talked to, the ones I've interviewed for books and articles, uh, they all have that sort of common trait, those common traits. They, they inspire, they motivate, they, they're great communication, uh, great communicators. And they're able to distill the message down into something that people can get really simply. So that's an interesting concept when you talk about being great communicators, because today, obviously, communication is is a more complex thing than it ever was wow. before. In yeah. some ways, you know, because people receive information in so many different ways now and have so many different preferences and biases into how they get information. So it makes the job of a of a leader, you know, a little bit more challenging, right? Oh, I think it's, it's really hard. And, you know, we have, I think the thing I heard the other day was we have, a, this is the first time that we've ever had five generations in the workforce, wow. right? Right. Where, where we've got every, you know, we've got millennials, we've got Gen X's like me, and I don't, I don't know all the other ones that are in the workforce, but uh, you, you know, and, and every single one of those generations is, is accustomed and, and wants their information in a different way. So absolutely, I agree with you. I think it's a, a real unique challenge. And so I think that makes it a tough, tougher for leaders to say, okay, I've got to, I've got to be able to communicate via Twitter. I've got to be able to communicate on Snapchat. I've got to be able to communicate on, on Facebook. I've got to communicate on uh, through email. I've got to be able to do it in a bunch of different ways. So that people understand the vision and understand our our our, uh, our value system, what our values are, and what our goals are. Uh, so absolutely, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it effectively, but it, 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 that's the challenge, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and I guess the other part now is that a lot of organizations. I mean, once upon a time, you know, people were all in the same building or they were in various physical locations together. Yeah. Now we have this whole distributed workforce where people may never meet each other face to face and maybe in far flung reaches of the world and you're just using tools like we're using here to communicate. So again, that kind of raises some challenges for a leader to create a cohesive culture, right? Oh, I, you know, no doubt about it. I think that, um, you know, you see this sort of explosion of the remote work uh, going on around the world, and and there's a lot of value in what someone in different a different culture, a different place, mm -hmm. a different um, can bring to the table, right? And and it's 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 made uh, it's given us a lot of opportunities around the world, and and you presented the challenge, which is 
how do you share that vision and those that work ethic and that t the camaraderie that you get from sitting next to Joe in the next cubicle, you know, um, how do you, how do you build those teams? And I, I think that, uh, again, that's where that community, that key that is, is that, that communication and, and the ability for that leader to share vision, to share, uh, the, the corporate culture, to share what is important, you know, um, I was, I was talking to Jeffrey Hazlett today and mm -hmm. he talked about what are your, what are your walk away values? Right. And, and I thought that was a really interesting uh, thing that he said, because, you know, he, what he was talking about is what are you going to get up from the table and walk away from if, if the deal isn't right or if the business mm -hmm. isn't, if the, you know, if the, if it, if it's not working. Uh, so I think being able to share that, that's, that's tough. And I, and I think it presents some unique, unique challenges absolutely yeah and obviously you know you're in brazil right now and obviously you travel around the world you know working with people do you see great differences in leaderships in 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 different countries or culture or there is there what you talked about earlier are those common traits common regardless of geographic location uh, i've lived in eight countries and i've worked in over 40 Mm -hmm. And I think a good leader is a good leader is a good leader. Mm -hmm. I think that those are, those are just really common traits. Uh, I, uh, my business partner and I used to have this sort of debate and, and I'll switch it around on you and ask you the sure. question. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's like genetic or you're born with certain personality traits and certain things that, that help give you that presence and that leadership. Or do you have to, or can you learn all that? I, I guess, I don't know where I come down on that. I think sometimes it's innate, but then again, you can learn some of these things, right? Mm -hmm. If you have good mentors and have good people and good examples. What do you think? I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think, yeah, I think some of it's innate, uh, but I think a lot of it is learned um, behavior. And, uh, and um, well, in my own case, I'll just say a lot of it's maturity too. I mean, to be honest, I mean, um, yeah the way we operate when we're, you know, some of us, when we're younger, maybe we're a little less uh, considered, I think, in the way we, the way we express ourselves. And then we learn as we, as we uh, get on. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of learning involved for sure, but I do think, I do think back to your point of communication, I do think it's hard to be a leader if you don't have good communication skills or you don't learn how to communicate uh, in a concise fashion. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you really do need to distill down things for people, don't you? If you're going to have an org, it doesn't matter whether it's a five person or a 5,000 person organization. If everybody doesn't really understand what the organization is about, the customers are going to get mixed messages. Well, I think, and I think the, the evidence is out there and the, the research is out there. Uh, and I can't cite any specific studies, but I, I know that it's out there and I've read so much about it that people hate going to work. They don't know what, what they're going to work for, mm -hmm. you know, and it's overwhelming. I think it's, it's like, it's way over 50% of half the people that hate what they do and they don't like going and they don't know what they're doing it for. And that means we're failing as leaders, right? It means that we're not, um, that, that we're not doing a great job of communicating mm -hmm. that, that, that vision for what we're doing. Yeah. And I think there's also a part of it too. There's a balancing act because I do think there's a greater expectation nowadays of somehow as you as my, you as my leader or boss or whatever, it's up to you to make me happy. That should be your primary concern, <laughs> right? You should be worrying all the time about whether I'm happy in my job or not, as opposed to, you know, being a little bit more, more balanced and realizing that it's a, it's a, it's a collective thing, right? Yeah, right. There, there is obviously there's a lot of personal responsibility in that too, <laughs> yeah. no doubt, yeah. no doubt. Um, so, so we're, um, getting back to you know, the, the the traits of of leadership. Um, so, obviously, the good communication and being able to communicate uh, things concisely, you know, is very important. Um, but I guess um, trust and integrity is a huge part too, isn't it? And that's and that's something that you. I mean, that, that comes with time and with the evidence of your actions. Absolutely. You have to earn it. I think that 
I think you have to live, walk the what the, what what's the, the cliche walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm-hmm. I think that that's that's apt because uh, you know if if you're not if you if you don't and and people see you do something else and say something else then then they're not going to trust you they're not going to believe in you and they're not going to they're not going to follow you right and and I think that that's uh, a huge aspect of it and and then the f- other fact I think that we miss sometimes is is does the person care right does the person truly care do mm-hmm. they do they do they do they make an effort to know their people to know who they are to know something about them and do they and do their actions show that they care right you know, i think that that's something that's that people because uh, at the end of the day it's it's sort of a basic human emotion right we want to know that the people that we're with a majority of our day in our lives that somebody cares about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think absolutely, absolutely. And, and another thing I think obviously is, uh, you know, being cared about, but also it gets back to what you're talking about in terms of understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it, I guess, really understanding what the purpose of the company is. I mean, you know, what is it at the end of the day that the company is doing um, service product, whatever, what benefit is it bringing to the, to the people who are the end users? Well, and that's, that, that's hard. I mean, I, you know, if you're making coat hangers, what mm-hmm. is the, what is the, how do you go home and feel good about that at the end of the day? So I think it's the responsibility of the leader mm-hmm. to, to, to make you feel good about that, to make you, or to, to make you understand the importance of it. Although yeah. seeming, I mean, it's, it's, maybe it's not a, maybe you're not changing mm-hmm. the world. Maybe you're not, you know, creating something mm. that's changing the world, but one I one think, less one less wrinkle at a time. Right, right. <laughs> how do you how do you put it in a context that people still get fired up and 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 motivated to do a good job? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, and and it's hard, uh, and it's obviously hard because you know companies go. To, I mean, as you've written a book on on you know entrepreneurship, and obviously that's a rocky road for a lot of people. It's hard to it's hard to keep people motivated and inspired when maybe things are tough. Yeah, uh, it is, and it is a constant. I think it's something that you have to constantly do. And uh, I was having a conversation about uh, with a client the other day about how he kind of woke up one day and he realized that, you know, his company was, was in a rut and, and, and that they had sort of lost their way. Right. It's because he had kind of lost his way Mm -hmm. and he wanted to get it back. He wanted to get that, that inspiration and that, that fire in the belly, that that cliche that he wanted to get that back. And, and so, you know, we're working on a program to help him do that and to find that again. And I think it's easy. I think it happens overnight. I think it happens. It can happen very easily. Well, I think it can happen very easily because I think um, people are always looking to get into some kind of rhythm, some kind of predictable rhythm, right? And, And they allow it to happen because that kind of feels comfortable to people. And it's only after a while you realize that it's actually a detriment, right? That things need to be more dynamic. Right. I mean, I remember that feeling about seven or eight years into my first company and I, I, it was time to go mm-hmm. because I, I was no longer, um, I, I had already kind of checked out, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it was time for somebody else to come in and bring a new energy and a new, uh, a new vitality and a, and a new, uh, just a new energy to mm-hmm. that I, that I couldn't give anymore. And I, and I, at some point I realized that. So I know what I know what that feels like. Yeah. Yeah. So how do leaders stay, uh, you know, calm, calm and and still motivate people when maybe they're feeling the pressure themselves? Like, how do they make sure that they don't transfer that onto everyone? I think that takes a lot of work. I mean, I I don't like to sound self-serving, but I think hiring a coach and mm-hmm. and is is a really good way to stay focused stay calm stay grounded stay um even keeled uh, because a, a coach can help you um do things to help relieve some of those pressures and and see some things that maybe you can't see because you're so focused in on on the problems and the issues 
Uh, so I, I, a coach to me has always helped me or a mentor has always helped me sort of stay grounded so that, that I can, so I don't transfer that stress and that, that anxiety that I'm feeling uh, over to, uh, to the people that work with me. Uh, I, I will say something you said earlier, which is really, really important. It's a maturity too, mm-hmm. because I, I know things that, that bother me, that bothered me early on that today don't cause me a, mm-hmm. a, a bit of stress yeah. because, because I, because I know that I, it can be worked out. I know yeah. that there's a solution. I know that it's, it may take some work. It may be a big problem, but I know that I've, I've, I've tackled problems like it before. And, you know, if I focus in on it and I, 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 I can solve it, there's a solution. Yeah. And, and so that, that helps to, to have been there. I mean, really, really helps. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think, uh, hey, listen, the young people are, they've got all their technology, they've got their enthusiasm, they've got their creative ideas, but we've still got, we've still got experience on them. <laughs> so we've still got something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, I just want to underline what you said about coaching, because this is a, a thing that always kind of strikes me is that uh, when somebody's in a position of leadership, it's a lonely position, right? And they're yeah, the the people below them on the on the hierarchy have each other to kind of talk to the leader rarely does so having a coach is a fantastic outlet and i guarantee you sometimes people spend more on a coach for their hobbies than they ever do on a coach for the thing that actually puts bread on their table i i it, that astonishes me actually and you know i i look at uh I was a, a college athlete and, and, you know, we had a slew of coaches and mm-hmm. I never, I never went much further than that. But if you look at high performing athletes, they have a nutritionist, they have a technical trainer, they have a, a, a physio, a physio trainer, you know, they have a head coach that, that you know, yeah. I mean, so they, they have people, you know, that help them get where they're going to, where they want to go. And, and I think we, as, as, Executives and companies, we should look at it the same way. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's and, an and investment. Board, and boards of directors, yourself. and boards of directors should look at it mm-hmm. that way too. Yeah, and I think that um, you know, and and I would advise people: like, don't wait around for your board of directors or anybody else to do it. I mean, invest in yourself. Uh, it can save well, you a lot in the long run. Well, and that, one other point that I would say is is that I think we also leave out middle management and lower and, mm-hmm. and lower management because we often put people in positions of management who've performed well in a job. Yeah, yeah. And we say, we say, okay, you should be a manager. Right. And we give them a title uh, and then they don't get any help until somewhere when they, if they're lucky enough to get to the C-suite or if they've taken an initiative enough to, to grow on their own. And, 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 and that's a, I think that's dangerous for a corporation to put people mm-hmm. in positions of, of decision making and power without really investing in them in terms of trying to to make them better as well. So I, I think that that's yeah. something, that's an area that we often overlook. Yeah, no, and I totally agree with that because a lot of people, if you take it that a lot of people who are high performers in their jobs and 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 then they're made managers. A lot of people are what what you would call is unconsciously competent. Um, they're really good. They're really they're <laughs> like really that. good, but but they don't actually know. If you ask them, like, what is it that you do that makes you really good? They don't really know. So it's not a very it's not it's it's not very transferable. Yeah. You know, therefore, when you put them in a position of management, you know, they can't just say, "Well, can I just do what I do?" And everybody says, "Well, we're not quite sure what that is." <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Well, Rhett, we're bumping up against the end of our time here. So before we go, if you just want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you and what you do. Well, you can go to my website, uh, Rhett Power, R-H-E-T-T-P-O-W-E-R.com. And you can find books. You can find my column on Forbes. You can find my column at Inc. and my column at Thrive. I write seven or eight. 10 times a month for those three publications on a regular basis. And I've got a brand new LinkedIn live show, which I do 12 noon Eastern standard time uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. And um, uh, I I interview thought leaders and authors and CEOs 
uh, to sort of pick their brain on their habits and the things that they do that could maybe all help us be a little bit better. And so that's an exciting new show on the LinkedIn Live platform that I'm, I'm really excited about. So I'd love for people to join me over there. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I must check it out. And, and Rat, listen, uh, thanks very much for joining us all the way from Brazil for taking time out of your, your busy schedule of uh, hanging out on the Copacabana beach or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm taking, taking dancing lessons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, again, this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.